What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy, MM2K of PNTS Network and Hard Knock Digital Culture, back again with a new rant video. Um, are exclusives bad for the industry? Um, it's a big topic that's been brought up. There's a GameIndustry.biz article, and I just see a lot of activity on Twitter trying to address this topic. So I felt like I will put my two cents in there, being that we focus big time on triple a high-end exclusives and why we think they're important to the industry and uh i, I give you my answer my take and, and hopefully you guys will appreciate it um with that said before we get too deep into this one do us a huge favor hit that like button hit that subscribe button and rock those bells for notifications please so you know when we're dropping these doses all right so let's get right into it um are exclusives bad for the industry i'm going to say no and i say no confidently i just think Things are being mixed in the same bucket and it's always important. I, I get how easy, I get how knee jerk it is for society and groups, especially if they don't have the lineage or understanding of where, how we got here from the past. They, they try to retroactively, you know, catch up by just bundling everything into the same bucket, making everything the same throwing everything in the same pot of jambalaya it, it, it just doesn't work that way things have a culture to it like gaming or things like gaming rather that have a culture to it have a distinct history and you can't just blur the lines to make it easier for you to understand and i feel like gamers within the last maybe five or ten years in this thing that's what they tend to do they don't understand the dynamics of when PlayStation first hit the scene and how, or even well before that, how exclusives played a major role in console gaming and they were the lifeline and they were adored by gamers. And now all of a sudden we want to eradicate them. You know what I'm saying? And the cost of getting these consoles um, are the same that they, that they have been is when you adjust for um, inflation you know what i'm saying they pretty much been the same except for the neo geo which was extremely uh you know over overpriced you know what i'm saying great system but still was overpriced but that's here and we're there um but again i think within the last you know five to ten years maybe even less um you have some newer gamers uh that are trying to get acclimated to the culture and they just don't understand what plays a role for what reason why and why it's important um, so I don't think exclusives are bad. Um, this question is being brought up in light of the whole Activision Blizzard um, thing. And I think that's different. When, there's a difference between exclusives and consolidation. Uh, I want to give you guys a prime example. Now, for full transparency, I am not in favor of the Activision Blizzard deal because I am not a fan of consolidation. I feel like when these studios um, can be as independent as, po as possible, work on side projects, but when they want to work on something real big, if they don't have the funding to do it within their house, go ahead and work with a, uh, a platform. Um, let them invest in it. Let them see how you guys can come up with a title, a game that'll bring out the, the best act that'll bring out the best accents of your platform we've seen how that's worked over and over again it's worked for nintendo it's worked for sega it's worked for playstation and it's worked for xbox as well um as a matter of fact for full transparency as well i am not a fan of the xbox ecosystem at the moment because i'm just not a big fan of the phil spencer vision of gaming um i feel like phil spencer's vision tries to make you the all around every joe gamer where you you know they try to culture you into enjoying everything look there's different demographics like i said you can't throw everybody in the pot of jambalaya you know jambalaya a jambalaya people like what they like and you can't make them like something else so if i'm a gamer that just plays call of duty in 2k that's what i do give me an opportunity to expose myself to more stuff but at the core of my experience please continue to compliment what i'm looking for in 2k and call of duty i'm a chip triple a genre defining gamer yes to flourish new platforms like stadia and cloud gaming i did have an appetite for some games that i normally wouldn't touch but that's to help flourish those platforms but i go to my big 
ticket AAA platforms that cost me $500 or more, you know, when necessary um, for those big ticket games. I don't go there for fizzle, chisel, pizzle, popper. You know what I mean? And that's just, well, that's not just me. That's the whole high end gamer demographic, right? Um, I don't believe in Phil Spencer's thing with Game Pass to where we're going to throw everything in the pot. Just try it out. Just try it out. No. What I want is I want all the car purchases. I don't mind game subscriptions. Don't get me wrong. Um, but for day and date stuff, I want all the car purchases because I want to know that the developers and the publishers are getting the biggest bang out of their out of the buck that they receive they're getting the most money possible because the more money means more resources to, to bigger and better triple a games when we have things like game pass where all of a sudden outriders is being dragged into game pass um yeah okay square enix may be getting the fat check but that might be messing up the royalty scheme with people can fly as, as it appears that has happened and people can fly is the actual talent and if being that they haven't gotten the royalties that they deserve because of, it, this game was thrown in the game pass all of a sudden that studio could close down not saying that's what's happening but the studio could close down you know what i mean so i, I don't I, I i prefer for the big ticket triple a games I prefer that they be under the a la carte purchase model. That way they still get that number one way for them to be supported. Also not a big fan of putting your games in their day and date, whether you can afford it or not, because here's the reality of it. It's a business. At some point in time, you're going to cut corners. You're going to cut costs. And that thing that you're charging $70 for that's supposed to be AAA may not come out that way. <laughs> Redfall. Okay, need I say more? All right, so th th that's my opinion. If anybody uh, feels otherwise, not a problem, that's fine. You fit into a different demo. Now, your likes and my likes may cross paths into where, you know, something critical like this ABK deal, you know, it's gonna go one way or the other and somebody's gonna be happy or, and somebody's gonna be disappointed. We don't know if it's gonna be me or it's gonna be you if you're the one that disagrees with me, if you're not a AAA high-end enthusiast like myself. Um, that being said, you know, you, you stick to, you like what you like and you're going to stick to your guns and, and, and that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. That being said, I wanted to put that all out there for full transparency. Now, um, the reason why I make a clear distinction between exclusives and consolidation is for this. I'll give you a prime example for more transparency. Even though I'm not a big fan of this current regime with Xbox, I loved the previous ones not, not so much donnie d but i love the peter moore for instance i think he's the best gaming exec ever uh i love the peter moore era and what he did for xbox 360 um you know it just encompassed everything that i i could dream dream of um and that in those eras those previous eras what made the xbox 360 the dominant force that finally did something that all other platforms couldn't do and which was bring playstations to playstation to its knees it was it's, it's it's exclusive deals that made that happen you gotta remember coming into the console generation um the sixth generation with the nintendo with um the xbox and with the uh playstation 2 there was the nintendo gamecube there was the PlayStation 2 and there was the OG Xbox. Um, Nintendo has its history of exclusive content and deals. They didn't have a problem having their stuff. I just think that the hardware and the control mechanism kind of fell behind um, as far as grabbing people's attention. Uh, because you know things like the control schemes didn't keep up with that genre that generation of games so that's why i think the gamecube fell behind now xbox was the newbie on the scene so they were introducing a lot of games that people were not familiar with um and so the only thing that people like really wanted to box for was halo so that's why they were far behind too but they they didn't quit they were going to stick in the game um they had something with halo and they said they, they, they were going to build off of that playstation 2 
um, not only had the proper scheme, you know, control scheme that could keep up with that generation of games, but also they've had some ex- they had some um, exclusive games um, that you would be a fool to not own a PlayStation 2 for, even if it wasn't your preferred platform. And this was a battle that PlayStation 2 found itself in a comfortable place in just because of the, the, the sake of the whole console wars prior to them, you know, Nintendo. Um, used to be the spot that had all the treasured, um, you know, uh, games, you know, exclusively, whether they were timed or not. And then it, it started to seesaw. And then you saw in the sixth generation that the PlayStation 2 had the bulk of them. Um, again, Nintendo had some great games, but um, I just think it couldn't keep pace with that generation. They decided to take a step back and go in a different direction with the Wii. But Xbox was the newbie that had difficulty getting access to the more familiar games because they were new. And, you know, it costs you a lot more to get those cherished games um, on your platform. And the OG Xbox just wasn't ready yet. They hadn't hadn't had enough saturation. So what did Xbox do? Well, they came up with a winning strategy. They said, we're going to come out a year early and we are going to heavily invest in getting those games that people want. Not only are we going to invest in heavily getting those games that people want, but some of these games we're going to start making them timed exclusive meaning we're not just getting access to grand theft auto 2 or final fantasy as well we're going to make games like call of duty exclusive we're going to get exclusive content and stuff from grand theft auto so they really paid a lot of money and invested to get into the game versus playstation and really push the envelope on exclusive content, right? You fast forward a little bit to um, the end of the PlayStation, I mean, of the Xbox 360 life cycle, and they started focusing on the Kinect, which was to their demise. I think their focus on the Kinect, their disjointed way that they addressed the third-party publishers that they just made good with, thinking that, oh, we can, we can make our own software. We don't need you anymore. And PlayStation just scooped those people up. And the rest is history. That's all that was. And then when PlayStation scooped them up, Xbox didn't feel like it was worth fighting for them again, fighting hard enough to get them again. You know what I mean? So the whole exclusive, getting time exclusive, having a bulk of them, whatever, that's been the back and forth ebb and flow of gaming since the beginning of time. And it's worked for gamers. It had it doesn't feel stifled. It doesn't feel stale. Um, it's worked for gamers. It's worked for gamers because it forces the platform holders to work hard and really invest for you. Not only do they need to invest to either ensure that the plat the, the, those favorite games are on the platform, but they need to work with these third party developers to start making games that helps make their box look fantastic. You know what I'm saying? And that's the biggest thing that 360 did. 360s of my top three generations um, might even be number one. I'm always battling that in my mind. But what made the 360 so great is it carried on a tradition of having great exclusives, even though they were a little less notable on the OG Xbox. But now they were a lot more notable coming in the 360. There's games like Bioshock in mass effect that even though they were timed those games were synonymous with xbox another third party exclusive until they bought the rights to the game was gears of war you know what i'm saying and there were other ones that maybe were not as successful but showed the pedigree that xbox was going in with triple a high-end games um games like too human you know what i'm saying so um xbox already had a winning formula they were able to do something that other companies were not able to do and that is bring PlayStation to its knees and actually beat them in software sold during the seventh generation. No, no, nobody's ever beat PlayStation. The only time PlayStation got beat in software sold was the seventh generation and Xbox did it. So Xbox already has the blueprint and they've already shown that they can operate in the space. They just miscalculated what the Xbox One didn't reinvest in the game after realizing their mistake. And now what they seem to be trying to do is they're trying to win by consolidation. Now, what is consolidation? Consolidation is instead of me going, instead of doing what they did in the 360 era, let's take Bioshock, for example. Instead of me going to um, Take-Two and Ken Levine and saying, look, we really love this game. 
This game looks like it's going to be the next big game. We want to invest in it and work with you however we can to bring this game to fruition. Let's write out an exclusive deal. Instead of me doing that for that particular game, which is going to draw a lot of attention to my, my platform, and it's going to make some people sour because um, they're not going to be able to play it day one on PlayStation 3. You know what I'm saying? I, I I approve of that deal as an exec within the Xbox 360 era. What I don't do is I don't buy, I don't go to 2K and say, okay, and also I want Borderlands, I want uh, NBA 2K, and your whole stock and lineup of games. We're gonna we're gonna take those from PlayStation 3. I strategically go through various big ticket games that are gonna be coming available. And I see where I can make an investment and then help flourish that game. And I make a strategic choice in that avenue because I feel like this game will be a great fit for my platform because my platform can do A, B, C, and D. You know what I'm saying? So strategically, it made a lot of sense for Bioshock to be a timed exclusive on the Xbox 360. It made a lot of sense for Gears of War to be an, uh, be an exclusive a second party exclusive particularly because uh cliff belinsky and um you know the people at epic worked hand in hand with the development of the xbox 360 and had them um um release some additional ram so the game can play smoother on the xbox 360 you know what i'm saying a lot of people were having problems with their action titles at the beginning of launch on the playstation 3 that made the xbox 360 the perfect home for a game like Gears of War. They didn't have to worry about trying to port it on a troublesome PlayStation 3 it was a perfect fit. Every single Epic game that came out there forward was not an, ex an Xbox exclusive. Gamers in totality still had a plethora of AAA games that they could enjoy. You know what I'm saying? Um, that were multi-plat. That's where consolidation ruins everything. When you okay consolidation in that realm you're not just strategically looking at this game and looking at that game and and fi figuring out where it's going to be the big fits for your platform you're swallowing up everything no game is going to release day and date on the plat. none of the critically acclaimed games are going to release day and date on your platform nor will or they may not ever Forget day and date. That's what consolidation does. And then it takes, it strips away the multitude of um, multi-plat games that the general public can look forward to. And the thing that I find contradictory is people say, I hate exclusives. I hate exclusives. And this is coming from one, but let's keep it real. The, the, the people that hate exclusives, mainly are the Xbox people. You don't hear Nintendo people saying this. You don't hear PlayStation people saying this. It's the Xbox people. And I think it's the Xbox people because they, they're not going to admit it. Their, their exclusives just aren't as flashy, as not attention grabbing. It's not as desired as the other exclusives. So now they hate exclusives, right? They hate them. Um, you ha They hate exclusives, but they are happy that Xbox is consolidating the market and taking games that are generally been across the market for decades and making them exclusive to xbox that doesn't make any sense that, that both cannot operate the same space in the same time they just can't even if xbox is your preferred platform you cannot appreciate them consolidating the market and forcing it just to their platform because for instance let's look at call of duty the dual sense controller the latency that is produced from the latest xbox controllers are superb they are unmatched but everything else about the dual sense controller far surpasses that there are haptic feedback mechanisms that activision actually helped design we found that out via the um the abk case you know with the ftc versus uh, microsoft and the activision blizzard merger that sony actually went to activision got their input on on the dual sense controller because they had call of duty in mind so there are certain things that with call of duty are just going to make it a better play on playstation for gamers that just aren't going to be there 
for Microsoft, you know, under a Microsoft helm. And I get to where they're going to do these 10 year deals or whatever. But to Sony's point, that's going to force them to not be able to share their sh share that haptic information with a rival. You just don't do it. Um, now, I don't know if that point is going to hold weight in court. You know to, to put up the preliminary injunction or to block the deal in the u.s courts but regardless of that that is a legitimate concern with gamers now they're not going to have that consolidation harms the fabric of the multitude of um multi-plat games that the average gamer can enjoy it it totally disrupts the the gaming infrastructure when it comes to high end AAA games in particular, and it sets it on a course that I don't think is positive. There's nothing positive to derive from that. Now I can throw in there too. I don't think Microsoft knows how to manage games. I think Redfall is a prime example. I, I think some of the issues that we've seen off the bat, and we'll see how that lands with Starfield, 30 frames per second. I just feel like that, um, you know, even though that's an artistic vision from Todd Howard, he knows how big PlayStation is. He knows the expectations that the PlayStation gamers have of performance modes because that's what PlayStation offers with their games. And he knows that PlayStation wouldn't be happy if Starfield didn't have a performance mode. And he also knows <laughs> that PlayStation is currently on pace to start out selling the Xbox two to one. Now you may say, oh, it doesn't matter because Xbox is everywhere. They're not making up that, that gap everywhere. The core consumer for Xbox is on console. So if anybody wanna, makes it, wanna make it seem like that, even though they're you know on pace to losing two to one again to PlayStation, that they're making that up somehow in the cloud and on PC, no, it's, it's, not, it's not happening. It's not happening. Well, not at the moment, not at the time of this recording. It's not happening. And who's to say it ever will? People may say, well, this is their plan. This is their plan. Again, listen to the documents. This is not me hating. This is probably some of you on the other end of this mic not facing reality. When you listen to the testimony from Phil Spencer, they've said and tried to do a lot of things and it just didn't work. You can't blame Game Pass not hitting its marks on PlayStation. Y'all say that PlayStation Plus can't compete with Game Pass. So why is Game Pass not hitting its marks, right? xCloud, y'all say PlayStation, X, look, and I'll admit PlayStation Now's cloud service in, in, in core ways is inferior, mainly because it's capped at 30 frames per second. At least xCloud can do 60 frames per second and they've pushed it further. How come xCloud outside of what it's doing with Fortnite have not hit the margins that they've said. You can't blame everything on PlayStation, right? So Phil and Xbox has said a lot of things that they've wanted to do. And like the FTC um, lawyer pointed out, you haven't hit on any of your marks. Now they've tried to flip it on PlayStation. You want to blame them, whatever. It's, it's, just not, it's just not feasible to be able to blame them for everything. I have my own opinion. I feel like the PlayStation is just playing. They doubled down on the atypical game like Xbox did prior, Nintendo did prior, whatever. And, and Xbox under Satya is looking at it. Satya not having the gaming pedig pedigree, not really caring about the culture of gaming and say, well, let's just let's just uproot it and, 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 and fix it to where it only benefits us because nobody else can touch our war chest. That type of mind state and the consolidation that goes along with that will hurt gaming tremendously, in my opinion. That's why I'm not in favor of it. You know what I mean? So again, you have situations in the past like with Bioshock, like with Mass Effect, where, where, where Microsoft really was going off, you know, off the deep end in a good way with exclusive content. And it worked. It was a winning formula. And it, they incurred a lot of risk because of it, but it was a winning for, they, they brought PlayStation to their knees. Now, if they can do that again, that's great. But in order to do that, what has to happen is you have to have talent that knows how to determine what's a good game and what isn't. And that's where Xbox, I think, that's where, that's where they fall short. They have a lot of smart people 
that are crafty with words and would like to try a lot of technical smart things. But PlayStation is more in the art and the cultural art of gaming, the 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 appraise of gaming opposed to the technic the technical doodad button and wires of gaming. And I get where a lot of people hearing this on the other end of the mic may appreciate that more. But as as a enthusiast of AAA genre defining gaming, I appreciate the buttons and wires to gaming. I'm a tech enthusiast, but the tech part doesn't supersede the gaming part. Not for me, because here's the thing. When you just focus on the technology of the hardware and, and things on exclusive, you know, it's just about what the capabilities of the tech are. All you have is Android versus Google. I mean, Android versus uh, um, uh, uh, I, iOS, Google versus iPhone. That's all you have. It's, it's, it's just it's, it's just a redundancy of that. And gaming, if for those that have been gaming as long as I have, 35 plus years, you know the pedigree of gaming. This is where I point back to where people, I think people within the last five or 10 years just don't get it. It's just about pew, 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 pew to them. And why can't this just be available on any box? Now, when it comes to things like cloud gaming, which I'm a big time enthusiast of, I get it. It's just about access to the software. That's fine. But we're not in the chapter where cloud gaming is going to predominate yet, where it's it's something it's it's I, I don't want to say it's not vi it's definitely viable. It's just people have to, to buy into it, but it's not bought into yet. So it's not the next feasible thing for the average um, gamer because for psychological reasons, they just don't they just don't believe in it yet. That's it. it it's not because it ain't capable. Trust me. But with that said, yeah, the fight over on the cloud side is access, access to these games. You know what I mean? So I get where I, I differ from a lot of their takes on it because they just want the access. They know that Call of Duty in these 10 year deals will, will, will bring Call of Duty over quicker. And there's no denying that it'll bring it over quicker to the cloud. And that's what they want. They just want they want the access. I'm looking at the long term systemic ramifications of that, because there's going to be some point in time to where cloud is just going to be mainstream. It's not there's not going to be a fight for content. Content is going to drop on the cloud like it will everyone up. Where else? When we get to that point, because I'm going to still be gaming. When we get to that point, how are we going to look back at the decisions that were made back then and look at the ramifications of that in the future and say, oh, man, it really was. I mean, this, this stuff was eventually coming. We just fought for it to come sooner. But now it's really messing things up in the longer run. Like I always tell people that I mentor, young guys that I mentor, don't, you know, stay out of the streets. Don't let 10 or 20 years rest up, mess up the following 60. Because by the time you have the potentiality of getting old, you're going to make it to at least 80. You know, if, if, if you just die of natural causes, you're, you're likely going to make it to 80. So don't get yourself in trouble that's going to bump off that other 60 put you in prison or put, take you off this earth sooner don't let these don't let a quarter of your life mess up the other three-fourths of it so that's the way i look at decisions like this i'm not gonna i'm not gonna look uh, appraise uh a deal that's gonna bring call of duty over two years sooner than, a, than it was gonna come you know what i'm saying especially that we got games like x defiant that are that are that are appearing to be great substitutions to call of duty i'm, I'm not going to, i'm not going to fight for deals like that that are going to rush things prematurely just for that quick fix that's going to rest up the other three-fourths of my gaming life that's the way i look at it and i just think that this deal has the strong potential of doing that so Again, I don't want I just don't want to focus so much on the hardware, on the tech. When it comes to gaming, gaming primarily for me and many others is an art. See, this isn't just digital Uno that you can play on a gamepad. Pew, 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 look, the Uno cards light up. That that makes it transactional versus an art. Android versus iOS is transactional. This is an art. You get soaked in the ambiance. You get soaked in in in, in just the the uh, what's the I always I always forget that word. The atmospherics and stuff of it. It's just there's an art that just cannot be explained. Like for instance, um, 
you know, and, and this is why I think it's important that games are exclusive to certain platforms, because when I prefer to game in the cloud, now this may seem like a contradiction, but hear me out. I prefer to game in the cloud and I don't feel like that cloud gaming right now is about exclusive content cloud gaming right now to break through to the mainstream. The first step is for them to show the average gamer we can get all your stuff too and play it just as good and me knowing the average mainstream gamer that's cloud gaming's basic psychological hurdle is a you can get access to all the games that you have and b it'll play just as good and really when you talk about platforms like geforce now ultimate it can actually play better but shh, don't, don't tell anybody i told you that <laughs> but no seriously just check out our channel I'm gaming at 4K Ultra, 120 frames per second on technology stre that, that streams output that, that that's similar to what you'll get from a 4080 graphics card. You don't believe me? Go go talk. Go check out Digital Foundry. You are huge skeptics, or were huge skeptics, on what cloud gaming was capable of doing as far as performance. So, cloud gaming is about access they got to build that trust about that and then there's the concern especially with stadia dying the way that it did even though they gave everybody back their money it just wasn't a good look and we got to admit it as cloud gamers i know it, and it kind of set us back a little bit as far as you know extending that olive branch what happens if i invest in this cloud platform if this is a sole dedicated cloud platform am i sol am i because what am i going to do what am I going to do if it shuts down like Stadia? If it shuts down like Stadia, then, then I'm done, right? If it shuts down like Stadia, then I'm done. Now I can't access my games. That's why, again, because of Stadia shutting down, we got to reconfigure our message as far as the outreach to the mainstream gamer. This is not something that we're going to be able to force feed them. That's why, you know, since the death of Stadia, I kind of reconfigured my content and I went to more. I went back, not more, but I went back to my mainstream gaming roots. And I'm just talking to mainstream gamers the same way I did prior, except now I'm telling them, look, man, I do most of my gaming through NVIDIA GeForce now. And at first they may look at it and go, Pfft, that cloud gaming thing is dead. But the more and more I keep playing on it, the more and more they keep looking. Hey, yo, I heard that you can get six months free of that GeForce Now Ultimate. Yeah, bro, I've given out so many codes, it's ridiculous. I'm gonna be honest with you. In my two or three years of just trying to expose people of Stadia, I haven't had the, the success that I've had in convincing people that GeForce Now Ultimate is, is the stuff, because they can see it. And I'm not, and, and, and I wasn't shoving it down people's throats before. It was just before there were so many lies. It was it was harder to be fair to Stadia. It was harder um, to get people to even just take a look at it. Cause I felt like that it wasn't for everybody, but there were a lot more people that would have liked the platform than, than didn't like it if they just would have given it a try. It's different with GeForce now. Nobody say nobody can say anything bad about the platform. They just say, well, you know, it might shut down. That, that's the biggest thing. And, I, and the only thing I could do to prove it to them, the otherwise, is not to go out there and share statistics and do all that stuff and do, you know, do the things that I used to do. Because, again, that, all, that, that house of cards came falling in. All I can do is just say, well, look, it's still up now and I'm still playing it and they still keep making investments and Digital Foundry saying the same thing. That's all I can do is keep playing it. So me playing the platform can it can only reinforce what I'm saying. That being said, um, that's what cloud gaming is about. It's about access. So even though I game the majority of the time on the cloud, I still think that while cloud gaming is in the infancy trying to gain access, we need that whole console exclusive dynamic to bring the best out of games. What do I mean? You don't look at look at the top games the last five years that are winning awards. Not all, but the majority of them are exclusives. I'm willing to bet. <laughs> I haven't done the read, but I'm just thinking back. Just even within the last few years, the majority of them are exclusives. If not, the, if if I'm wrong, and if it's not the, a big bulk of them are, and they're influencing the industry. Like you have games like the Demon Souls games and stuff like that right 
that used to be exclusive for the most part to PlayStation. They're the ones that really invested in those games. Those games really weren't on Xbox all like that. And then once they became popular, not only did they influence the industry, but then Xbox was like, yo, we got to get your next iteration, which is Elden Ring on here. And then I think there was a, probably another Souls game that maybe made it to Xbox. You see what I'm saying? But that started off as an exclusive, something that that developer worked with with Sony to make the PlayStation 3 of all systems, you know, to, to, to get the best out of that. Now look at where it's at. And now you got Souls knockoffs everywhere. Even the game that I'm looking forward to the most in 2023, Remnant. <coughs> you can argue that that's a Soul-like game, but with just with guns. It's influenced by the soul, but because of the difficulty in the way that it plays, you can make that argument. So again, when you have these dynamics of where I got to sell you this box and selling a box isn't going to go anywhere anytime soon. And even as cloud enthusiasts, you know what I'm saying? I think we still can appreciate the box, even if we're not going to buy it or not. Why? Because when the box needs to be sold, then the platform maker says, you know what? We have to make the best compelling content to sell this box. Not just, I got to come up with an idea that I think will generate a lot of microtransactions and a lot of money. See, that's the general thesis that you get from multiplats. Some, some come out and they shine and they do better, but the majority of games that are exclusive, they're like, no, this has to be the top of the line content we may try some new stuff. We may hit the mark. We may fall flat, but we got to try. We got to try to do something that will compel people to buy this box. And you have situations where Sony, who kept owning that craft, owning that craft, owning that craft. And by the time we got to the PlayStation 4, even skeptics like me, who used to just say that Sony made walking simulator games, now is a big fan of their content because you had situations like where the uh, God of War, it's infam it infamously told that the God of War reboot, you know, was so long a development, what, eight years or something like that? I could be wrong on the number, but what happened was Corey Balrog and company had a different iteration of it, brought it to Yoshida, who was in charge of SIE at the time. And Yoshida looked at it and said, no, this is not good enough. Go back to the drawing board. And they came back with one of the most genre defining games in recent history, which was the God of War reboot. See, when you are that compelled to have to sell your box, you employ people like Yoshida, or you lean on people with that type of craft of the culture of the art that you get results like that. The problem with Xbox is I don't, they're not, they're not relying on that. They're trying to dazzle you with the controller. They're trying to dazzle you with the tech and they're falling short in expectations there. The world's most powerful console. It doesn't feel like that right now, does it? Because of the comparisons that are being done. But even if they would have fell short on the, the tech side, it's okay if they still had people in there that had a good eye for the art that can do things like Yoshida and say, no, our brand is synonymous with excellence. We're not just trying to meet a Game Pass schedule and fill things out on the Game Pass chart every quarter. That has to go back in the oven. You see what I'm saying? So you look at the, the, the difference and particularly my biases, which are not, which are not um, static, they're dynamic, depending upon you know your your, your culture and, and 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 the things that you've done, they can change. I don't I don't believe in that holding the flag or calling people flip floppers. I think that's stupid. I think that you know that's entertaining for the the console war. But if you're serious minded and you're really trying to have serious discussion about games and you really want to have discussion around you know what you know how can we you know, help set the path for the best games to be developed. Things like flip flopper and neutral and uh, that, that can't be in your vocabulary. That's console war talk. You know what I mean? Um, so that's why that whole dynamic with, um, what you call it? That whole dynamic with, um, exclusives in the box is important. And the, and more importantly, the personnel, I think the personnel for Xbox is too, you know, design around curating buzz 
around the tech, which as a tech enthusiast, I'm always enthusiastic about the tech, but it doesn't supersede the art. In every platform that has been out, the successful, well, all of them really, but the successful ones balanced the tech capabilities. They always try new things, Nintendo with the robot and everything, but it was the games at the end of the day. Like the robot was the gimmick. Duck Hunt was great at first, but then the gun went away. <laughs> the light gun went away. It became about the games. So the gimmicks with the tech cannot supersede the art. And every platform has made a balance of making sure that you got a great, you got some great tech that was complemented by the best of the art and the software. That's what makes AAA high-end gaming what it is. It's a combination of both. Otherwise, you just have Android versus iOS, which gaming is not about that, not at all. And I think that a lot of people that, you know, let me let me, let me clarify something I said earlier. I said a lot of Xbox gamers um, are the ones that prefer the whole, um, you know, I don't like exclusive things. I, I think it's a lot of people too. There's some people that, you know, they may not necessarily be Xbox fans, but they don't want to buy multiple games. They don't want to buy multiple platforms. They would just like, you know, to pick a platform out of the three, buy it for whatever reasons based upon the tech and just play anything anywhere. And to me, that's, it's just retail, retail wise is just not sensible. No, I'm not placing all my hard earned software on this device because you know what? That device might have the better tech. And I, and, 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 you know, if, if they out tech me, but I got the better art, it gives me a better chance if I keep the art, my, the art that I've created, or if I partner with people to try to make specific art for my platform. So just market wise, it just isn't feasible. It just doesn't make any sense. It takes away incentive to sell the box and the box is important right now. It, boxes are not going anywhere anytime soon. They're, imp they're still important. Secondly, um, when you have that dynamic, that, that's how we get the best games. So I think the investment is still, instead of trying to consolidate and take the whole kit and caboodle away from gamers, like I said, I'm all for Xbox sitting with Ken Levine, you know, and it, it, it was uh, um, uh, it was it, it was uh, Bill Gates and Steve Ballmer that sat with Ken Levine. And I remember him in an interview um, way back when saying that if it wasn't for Xbox's support, particularly Bill Gates, when he saw the game or whatever, giving him support and giving him some pointers or whatever about w what to do with the game, that, you know, that w we wouldn't see the game. He owed it all to Xbox. You see what I'm saying? One of the, the most important games in recent history, Bioshock, was attributed to the exclusive relationship that they had with Xbox because it was a perfect fit there. And I think you got that with other games, games like Mass Effect as well. See, I'm, okay, I'm, I'm all for that. I'm all for that exclusivity there, even on the second party part. What I'm not okay with is Microsoft sitting with, well, I mean, uh, Strawzell neck and saying, all right, we want the whole library. Even as a 360 fan, even as a purist hater of the PlayStation 3, I don't want that. That doesn't, you know, to, and, 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 and everything, there's no borderlands on play. No, no, that's that's taking it far and beyond where it needs to go. So in the art purist sense, I am a fan of exclusives. I think uh, when the right, whether they're done in-house with the right talent and the right leadership with an eye for, for the art, or an idea that's being fleshed out with a third party developer is partnered with a platform maker and they financially support it and they, they you know, they, they can then focus their attention on making it, you know, uh, make the platform shine. Then I think you have a better end result for gamers. Um, but no, I'm not I'm not for the whole kit and caboodle being purchased and taken away from everybody. And, and that's what these type th th this type of consolidation is going to lead to. And so you're going to get the you're going to get the antithesis of your if you hate exclusive, this is going to be the antithesis. So even if you don't like what, quote unquote, PlayStation has done, Play PlayStation has just doubled down on the game. 
that has always been played, which I think creates great games and experiences for gamers. If you don't like that dynamic, then I think what you have to do is you create a scenario where you support Microsoft maybe buying this content, which I'm still not a fan of, but keeping it multiplied. If Microsoft was still keeping this stuff multiplied, but then just throwing it in Game Pass, I, I, I still don't like it, but then I think you get more unification. But it, it kind of speaks to the hypocrisy of people saying, I don't like exclusives, but Microsoft is going to make to buy all of Bethesda and make all their stuff exclusive. Woohoo! It doesn't make any sense. Um, my preference, though, is without consolidation, these platforms just fight it out for, for you know, exclusive content. They curate and create, try to create the best content. We get the best games as a result. I know that some people don't like the dynamic of buying multiple boxes, but I think what you have to understand is when it comes to these games, they are catering to a triple A high end gamer and a triple A high end gamer in normalcy doesn't mind buying the box wherever great games are sold. And if you want to buy a product, that servicing a demo that you might not necessarily fit into. You just got to deal with the ramifications because it's for that demo. I think more people are willing to go and get whatever they got to get to access great content. And if you don't like that, then you got to understand that you're not in the majority and you can't reshape all of gaming to fit you in the minority and to thwart the majority because it's been working for the majority of consumers. We're talking about consumerism here. And your best bet is to argue for, okay, if Microsoft does obtain a company, your best bet, honestly, because look, let's keep it real. Your best bet, is, instead of getting mad at Sony and, and trying to advocate for games not being put on PlayStation or anywhere, that Microsoft absorbs your best bet is to advocate to your fellow Xbox gamers and say, look, I love Game Pass. I love the fact that these games come on Game Pass day and day. My, we've discovered that Microsoft doesn't even want to be in console gaming anymore. Let's let's stop fighting these wars on Twitter. Let's let Microsoft just be a publisher, a publisher with a cloud service. Let's let Microsoft just do that. Let's let them be a publisher with the cloud service again me personally we just saw this with embracer and we didn't hit the alarm bells on embracer because they were buying a lot up a lot of smaller companies but still now they're letting people go left and right after bethesda got purchased they had people let go and then was told they're not getting raises i mean this isn't just a microsoft thing this is a consolidation thing but so i don't i still don't it's still not the best answer for me but i feel like your best bet is instead of looking across the street turn to your neighbor and say look why are we even still operating why why are we operating as, as a as a um as a console let's let's become a publisher we're a publisher that happens to have a cloud platform and, and puts our games on pc and then we can put all of our stuff on on playstation as well and then that i mean if you if you guys truly think the console war is over then that's what you do then then if the acquisitions do come up that makes them a little bit more digestible but you run into these problems you run into these roadblocks that just make things more difficult to happen when you, you're through, through this duality of Yo, no, we're still in the console game. Oh, we really don't want to be here. And you, you more and more act like a publisher. You want people to think, you want people to believe you're a publisher and that the console war is over, but then you, you still compete like you want to win the console war. I, I, that doesn't make sense to me. To me, it just makes sense to, you know, sell your games on PlayStation and Nintendo and on PC make them available in the cloud reinvest in your cloud infrastructure and just put your stuff everywhere but again that's not the ultimate solution but it's a lot better than what you guys are defending because again outright consolidation is not good
for gaming because they want to consolidate and then just limit to their ecosystem, which is Game Pass. And everybody doesn't want Game Pass. I don't want to keep paying $15 a month just to pay, play Call of Duty on PlayStation if that ever became a possible. Maybe I would just want to buy it if they do acquire it. So just become a publisher. If you become a publisher, then that takes away the whole competitive thing between you and PlayStation. I mean, yeah, y'all might battle it out in the cloud later, but place it, that, that's years down the line. And then that just makes things, that just relieves the tension so much. Because really, Ubisoft is gonna be a competitor down the road in the cloud. You, you, you see what I'm saying? Potentially. Maybe not because you know you got Ubisoft stuff on. Well, no, no, no. I don't think you can. You no, know, you can play Ubisoft games on the cloud on PlayStation. You can on Nintendo. I mean, you can on Xbox, but you can on PlayStation. I was just playing uh, Division not too long, not too long ago on the cloud at PlayStation. So what you do? It you know you, you maybe maybe make you know. But down the road, as things tighten up, where you might have a clear advantage, then you worry about that. But right now you give yourself some breathing room to acquire the stuff that you want to, even though I don't agree with it. Now, I'm not saying that's what I want, but I'm saying like the argument that people are making does not jive with what they're condoning. So yeah, I think exclusivity is good. I think it's good in the traditional sense. I'm gonna, it's as cheesy as it's corny and as uncompelling as this may sound to a lot of the tech purists out there or the Xbox fans out there that, 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 that want like some type of boost <laughs> you know what i'm saying to the to the endemic that they're seeing as far as content is concerned or triple a high genre defining content is concerned um I, I i'm just gonna say this if it's not broke don't fix it the traditional gaming market works best for triple a high-end games and microsoft's best bet is to a get with it or in worst case scenario okay if you're gonna make acquisitions just become third party it gets no more simpler than that all right but that's it that's it from your boy let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below like i always say or curious what i think but if you did like what i had to say check out the links below to follow me the link to the broadband bullies pts network hard knock digital culture yes cloud dosage with all that said appreciate all of y'all peace have a wonderful gaming day